what, what the mate is talking about. What's up, family? According to an article written by the Sporting News, the NFL will take a 32% hit in viewership this year. Now, many of these exiting viewers, you can attribute to the fact that Colin Kaepernick, who played for the San Francisco 49ers last year as a quarterback, decided to take a knee during the playing of the national anthem to protest social injustice, specifically police brutality and their lawlessness of murdering innocent black men and boys and brutalizing black people. So yeah, Colin protested. His teammates, a few of his teammates followed and now a whole legion of players from around the NFL are deciding to take a knee. Fans are boycotting and the NFL is losing money. Bottom line. See, what they did not count on is the resilience of fans who actually love football but love equality and civil liberties even more. They was not counting on them to not show up. They thought that they would put their entertainment over justice. And some of them have. Some of them, I don't give a damn what you say. Man, you could say racism going in tomorrow if you could just not watch that game today. They'll be like, oh, hell no, I can't do that, man. You're asking me for too much, man. That's too, man, that's crazy, man. That don't make no sense, man. Why I got to not watch the game in order for racism to end? That don't make a lot of sense to me, man. Uh, can we, uh, can I watch this game and uh, we can maybe make it end the, the day after tomorrow? <laughs> can we wait till next week? <laughs> yeah, so I'm loving it, man. I'm loving it, I'm loving it, I'm loving it. The NFL thought that they could blackball Colin Kaepernick with impunity. They thought that they was going to get away and this was just going to go away. But it's not going away. And many people are making the conscious effort to not watch the NFL. I went into a restaurant twice this week and they had the game on. And I decided, you know, at first, I was gonna sit in the bar area the first time. And I decided, you know what, let me sit in another area because I don't want to even have to glance at the damn television screens because that's where the game was being aired at, in the bar area. Second time I went to a restaurant, they had it, they had the screens on uh, different walls and. So I was kind of surrounded, but I kept my head down. I'm like, I ain't watching. I don't want nothing to do with it. I'm not even trying to catch a peek. I don't want nothing, absolutely nothing to do with it. I don't mind sacrificing my entertainment for justice. I don't mind. I don't mind doing that even more uh, any more than I mind paying a few extra taxes so that the playing field could be just a little bit more level for those who don't have as much. I don't mind. I don't mind making sacrifices. But some people ain't going to do it. I don't give a damn what could come out of it for them down the line. If they can't get that instant gratification, you can forget it. But I love it. NFL suffered because they thought that they had the power to blackball Colin Kaepernick 
and get away with it. They thought that they was going to be able to retain all of those fans no matter what. And I got to give it to them. I can see where the arrogance come from because, you know, football is the number one thing in America. I mean, it's the biggest sport going. It's the biggest sport going. So I can see why they would be that arrogant. They make money hand over fist. And it's one thing, they don't even have to think about it. Even the losing team, the most losing teams have stadiums packed year after year after year, which is something I don't understand. I'm not supporting no losing ass team. I don't give a damn what y'all say. So, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about a losing team that has a tradition of losing. It's one thing to lose and, and you're kind of like going through some type of reconstruction phase or something. You're rebuilding. But some teams just have a penchant for losing. And I ain't getting behind no shit like that. I don't care what you say. Some teams, every time they get in the playoffs, they just can't do nothing. They just fold. Some teams have a losing air about themselves. I ain't getting behind them. I don't care what you say. So I can see where all of that come from. These teams, people follow them blindly. And they got a hell of a hook because the teams represent the cities. You know, all the teams are named after the city. So if you got a team called a Houston Texans or Baltimore Ravens or the Chicago Bulls or whatever team. You're thinking, you know, it's a pride thing because the team bears your city's name in it. So you're thinking like, man, it's a pride thing. So whether a team is losing or winning, people tend to support the team no matter what. They will blindly support the team. I don't believe in that. If you blindly support a team, what is the incentive for the team to, to change? Like certain owners are losers. You got certain owners who just do just enough to keep people interested in the game, keep them coming back. They'll win uh, a certain amount of games and it'll be just enough to encourage people to say, man, we're going to have a better team next year because they'll go out there and hire uh, a quarterback or a linebacker or, to fill whatever position that they feel that they're inferior in. They'll, they'll fire the coach, get some new assistants, just anything to just make little subtle changes year after year after year. And every year they are able to pull off that trick with the fans, like every year, they can just make a little subtle changes and the fans will just be so pumped up, so <laughs> encouraged every single year going into the year, the fans believe they have a shot at winning a championship, which I think is ridiculous. I'm not blindly supporting nothing. Nobody's going to su blindly support an artist who puts out whack material over and over and over again. Now, I'm not saying what's whack to you because what's whack to you might sound good to somebody else. So I'm saying once an artist establishes its, his base, his or her base, whatever that base is, they like whatever that artist does. Regardless of what you think it sounds like, I'm saying what that bass thinks it sounds like, what that bass likes. If that artist start giving them something else that they don't want and they feel like that music is whack, they're not going to continue to support that artist. They're not going to just buy that music blindly. They're not going to do it. They're going to say, that shit is whack. Rock and roll fans, they're a little bit different though. Because a rock and roll fan will be like, man, you know, Man, I really, really want to support. I really, really want to support Sting's new album. Uh, but man, you know, um, you know what? I'm gonna do it anyway, man. Because hell, it's, it's Sting, man. You gotta, you gotta buy it. It's, it's Sting. 
<laughs> that's how people, <laughs> that's how a lot of people think. You know, I'm going to buy it anyway because it's Sting, you know. And plus, you know, his, his wife is probably giving him a bunch of trouble, man. And, you know, he couldn't really think and couldn't get the, he couldn't get his creative juices to flow in, man. So, you know, I'm going to purchase it anyway. But shit. Hip hop, pop, R&B, that that shit be whack. It's going to sit on the shelf. Nobody's going to buy it. So, I'm proud of all the people that's been boycotting the NFL, especially the people that really, really love football. I'm proud of all of y'all. Continue to continue, continue, continue to fight. Stay strong. Go all the way through, all the way through the Super Bowl if you have to. The NFL has received a resounding message, a resounding collective message from the fans all over the world. And that message is money talk and bullshit walk. No more talk. What, what the haters talking about? Yeah. Order, Texas.